Hi, I'm Buffy. I um, have been seeing, initially I saw Dr. Champagne, then Dr. Kalmati, Dr. Pineda, Dr. Rula, Dr. Sue, at the social workers, the genetics counselor Mandy, um, the dietitian, physical therapist. <laughs> I've seen everybody at Ironwood pretty much. Um, and I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer, um, invasive ductal carcinoma, hormone positive, HER2 negative on Valentine's Day, 2018. Growing up, my uncle, my mom's brother, was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was in high school. And then when I was in my early 20s, my dad's sister was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it kind of became a thing like, hmm, is this something that we're going to see more of in our family? And then when I was 26, I found a lump and had a mammogram that they then said, we need an ultrasound and we need to biopsy it. So that became my life for several years was every six months I was having to go back and get checked because they always find a new lump or mass that they needed to keep an eye on. Um, and then I went through infertility treatment and did hormones. My kids were adopted, so I never had any pregnancies. I kept getting all these risk factors for breast cancer and I'm like, that's, I'm going to get breast cancer. We've got it in the family. It's going to be me if anybody's going to get it. Um, in 2009, my husband was diagnosed with bladder cancer. And he's doing great. He's He was treated. Um, he's a 10-year survivor now, so it's all good. He's been great. But I'm like, wait, that was supposed to be me with cancer, not my husband. But he, we did it. I was a caregiver. Treated, took care of him. My kids were little at the time. Um, in 2015, my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, stage three inflammatory breast cancer, which is a really rare one. This is my sister who's, she's a year and a half older than me. I'm two of four girls. Um, she went through chemo, mastectomy, radiation. She did not reconstruct. Um, she seemed to be doing well. I work in the medical field, so I was always the the go-to person to go through, you know, what everything was going on, what the treatments were, what the side effects were, what course she should take. But she seemed to be doing well. Things were good. Um, in April of 2017, my dad got diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer, small cell prostate cancer, which is a really rare form of prostate cancer. Um, he started treatment out at Mayo, and um, they told us that he would get treatment, but this would be what he would pass away from. So they didn't give us any numbers, but they prepared us for that. Two months later, my sister called me and she, her breast cancer had metastasized. So she started treatment for that. I was both my dad's medical person, my sister's medical person. I went to all the doctor's appointments, translated everything to everybody about what was going on, knowing that both of them, their prognosis weren't great. Um, at that time, myself and my sister, who's a year and a half younger than me, we see the same gynecologist in town, and he recommended that we seek genetic counseling, which my sister had already had genetic testing done. Um, and at that point, she told us that she was negative for everything. Um, we began the process of our testing while my dad and while we were while my dad and sister were going through their treatments my other sister and I started testing and my sister's came back first that she had a variant of uncertain significance that was a brip1 mutation um, when we told my older sister she said oh i have that one too so then they recommended my sister go see a breast surgeon to talk about options, what should be done from here on out. Um, my results came back a month later and I also had the same mutation. Um, so they referred all of us to see breast surgeons. Um, 
They gave us several options. We could, basically they said tamoxifen for 10 years, but they wouldn't recommend it. Um, monitoring with imaging every six months, which I had already been doing most of the past 20 years because I'd had three or four biopsies over that time. Um, or a prophylactic mastectomy. So my sister scheduled hers. She, she saw Dr. Cashman um, and Dr. Cashman did her prophylactic mastectomy. When I was in between getting my stuff done, I found another lump in my breast, which has been my life for like 20 years. So it was my, in my head, I'm like, this is why I'm gonna have a prophylactic mastectomy. I just gotta get this done so I can't keep worrying about this. I don't have to worry my family, my friends. Um, so they did the diagnostic mammogram and ultrasound. They said, everything's fine. There's nothing there. Proceed. So I saw Dr. Champagne and got scheduled with her, met with my plastic surgeon. They started communicating on when they were going to schedule my surgery. Um, she said, you have to have an MRI before we do a prophylactic mastectomy. It's just the standard of care. So I'm like, fine. It's just another thing. I did it. They sent me a thing saying, we see something we want to look at. Like, I just want to get this done and over with and get these out of here so I don't have to keep doing this. So I had, well, before that happened, actually, my, before I even went for, I had the diagnostic mammogram and ultrasound. They said everything was fine. My dad passed away December 8th. Um, his funeral was December 22nd. I found out the night before that my sister's treatments were no longer working and there weren't any options left for her. Um, but I wasn't allowed to tell anybody until after Christmas. So I knew that she was going into hospice after Christmas and there wasn't, we didn't know how long she'd have. They were hoping that she'd make it through the spring. Um, so then my sister had her mastectomy. We went up and visited my sister to see her one last time because she was in Colorado. Um, and that's when I found out about me needing additional testing. And um, I scheduled my biopsy for February 9th. At that point, I was already scheduled for my mastectomy March, 8th, March 19th. And my brother-in-law niece called me on February 3rd and told us that my sister wasn't doing well, that my sister didn't want any help until she absolutely had to because she wanted time with her family. So my sister, my mom, my, um, my brother-in-law's mom, we all made plans to go out and we had planned, we had like four weeks worth of all of us being able to be there to help out because my sister had three kids and the morning before I was supposed to fly out to see her, she passed away. And I had my biopsy on, she passed away Monday, I had my biopsy Friday. And then they called me on Valentine's Day to tell me that it was cancer. So it's been hard for me to separate my cancer journey with theirs because so much of mine came, I don't want to say came about, but I definitely caught it earlier than I probably would have if it wasn't for everything that they had gone through. Um, so initially it was just supposed to be Dr. Champagne that I saw and then she connected me with everybody else. <laughs> so it's been a journey. I've been to the breast cancer support group, the survivors support group. Um, I've done a writing workshop. I've done a jewelry making workshop. I've done meditation. I've done the essential oils class. There was a class on um, household products, mm -hmm. the health, the clean products. Um, I've kind of tried them all. Everything that's out there I've taken advantage of because not everything connected with me, but there were some amazing things and so many helpful things. And meeting other people who, who know what I'm going through who can empathize and not just, you can sympathize, but there's, it's completely different when you have somebody who knows how you feel. 
as I tell people, there is not one thing about my body and mind that is the same that it was before this. Um, and it's not necessarily all bad. I'm trying to focus on some of the good and what's come from it. I've worked a lot with therapists and counselors and myself to heal and see the positive in it. Um, but my body doesn't work the same. I feel like I aged from a 46 year old to a 90 year old within a couple months time. Um, but I, I, what I have done, cause I got really sick and almost died last year from the, one of my complications. And what I've realized is that if I can fight this and go through the treatments that were necessary, I can do anything. And any opportunity that comes up that I maybe never would have even thought about doing two years ago, if somebody had said, hey, let's try this, I would have said, nah. Now I just do it. I take every opportunity. I've done so many, so much harder things than I started ballroom dancing. And I'm working with a breast cancer charity called Impact One that I got to do a fashion show with them that two years ago I would have been so insecure and been, well, I can't do that. I'll look awkward. And now I'm just like, sure, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And working with them and the ballroom dancing, it's just been extremely healing. And so I just say, take chances, live. That's what I'm trying to do now. <laughs> what I've learned is that life is short. Um, you don't know what's gonna happen. And it may not be cancer that does it, it may be something else. And don't put off what you wanna do. Take every opportunity, every risk, enjoy life and live it. Don't focus on the negatives. Find everything positive that you can because this life is amazing.